Hi, this is Brett Ingram, award-winning entrepreneur. And today I want to share with you why entrepreneurs struggle with confidence. So what do you think of when you think of an entrepreneur? What image sort of comes to your mind? Is it someone who's maybe self-confident, self-assured, a real go-getter? Somebody that always has a smile on their face and feels like, you know, success just sort of follows them around no matter where they go. Maybe you conjure up images of some of the most successful entrepreneurs in history, whether or not it be, you know, a Steve Jobs or a Bill Gates or whatever type of image comes to your mind. In general, when we think of an entrepreneur, for most of us, we have a positive thought about that and a positive connotation of somebody who ultimately deserves respect, or at least is someone who makes things happen, gets results, and sort of, you know, does things on their own terms, right? The interesting thing is the life cycle of an actual entrepreneur can really be fascinating. And I suppose in its simplest form, you know, if we look at some cases, there may be cases where it's pretty linear and it's simple, right? And it's uneventful. So we have the entrepreneur that maybe starts out to build a business and consistently and methodically sort of goes through that process and is able to build up the business, be successful, and regardless of how, you know, whether or not they, they you know, change markets or, you know, make the, the earth shake, at the same time, they certainly are able to make their, their own dreams come true and do the things that they set out to do build a successful business and live off of that. And that's possible as one path. The other path that we can think of that might be traditional is someone who has the idea, they start off in a business and unfortunately, you know, they end up with some struggles right out of the gate, problems right out of the gate. And these just continue to resurface. They're not able to sort of break through the, the gravity or the momentum needed in order to be successful. And so they decide to, you know, to, to tap out and basically say, I'm not going to be an entrepreneur anymore. So they give up. Now, those are two pretty linear, pretty boring, and pretty standard paths for entrepreneurs. But I'll be honest with you, I don't know anybody that's experienced any one of those. Those are two extremes, in my opinion, and in my experience, very, very rare. The more common journey actually has lots of highs and lows. It has lots of exhilaration and fear that would make a roller coaster jealous. And this is where the part of it as an entrepreneur and as someone who studies entrepreneurship, it becomes really fascinating. Because on one hand, in order to, to have the guts to be able to set out in the first place, we need to have passion. We need to have enthusiasm. We need to have drive. And we ultimately need to have confidence. You know, nobody says, well, I have no confidence whatsoever. I, I don't think I'm really going to succeed. I, you know, there's not really much chance of it working out, but I think I'm going to start a business. Nobody does that. Everybody feels as though the idea they've got, they're excited about, they want to move forward and they want to forge ahead and sort of be their own boss and start their own business. Now, the reason for doing that may differ. People might have different motivations for why they want to get into it in the first place, but they have the confidence because you need that in order to even have the guts to break out on your own and become an entrepreneur in the first place. Otherwise, you would never start a business. It's it, Look, it's a lot of work. Even if it's a simple business model, there's work involved. And the fact of the matter is, it is going to require passion and confidence to even get to that point where we actually make it happen. Tons of people would be, or virtual entrepreneurs, I suppose, have ideas. The vast majority of them never do anything. They never take any action. They never move any steps forward in order to try to, to realize those dreams or ideas. For the ones who actually take the step to do it, there has to be some level of confidence built in for them to want to do it in the first place. On the other hand, once we get, you know, once we're going, what we realize is really quickly, there's adversity, there are problems, there are challenges. You know, these things repeatedly test us because no matter what we are, no matter who we are, no matter what 
industry or business we're running, there are going to be challenges. There are going to be problems. And as these things creep up, they test us and they can chip away at our confidence if we let it. You know, each time that there's something that is a struggle, it's a bit of a ding. You know, it's a little bit of a voice of doubt in, in sort of the back of our mind with each issue. Because part of being an entrepreneur, it is personal. The very thing that makes the entrepreneurial journey exciting, rewarding, fulfilling, and allows us to have the level of passion we do is the fact that it's personal. And that very thing is also the thing that when problems come up, cause it to, you know, to ding our confidence, cause it to affect us personally, because we feel like it was our decision in the first place, right? So we wouldn't have had these problems if we didn't have the courage or whatever you want to call it, foolhardiness, I guess, if we're in a bad place, if we didn't have that to begin with, we wouldn't be in the situation where we now have a struggle that we need to overcome. And so as these problems and challenges continue to mount, they build up. So what ends up happening is a fascinating race between trying to succeed enough to reinforce and maintain our confidence, because every win we get is also personal and we can feel great about that. Like, yeah, we're, we're gonna make this happen, it's working. And the opposite, slogging through problems that tear us down and have us internalizing our own insecurities, our doubts and our fear of failure. So it's this scale, it's this balancing act where every time we have a win, we think, yes, we can do it. We knew we could do it. We knew we made the right decision, striking out on our own to be an entrepreneur because this is what we're destined to do. Then we have a bad day. We get hit with a couple of things we weren't expecting. We start to feel terrible. Yeah, I knew it. I knew I never should have did this in the first place. This was a mistake. All my friends, my family told me just to keep a job like I should have. And I never should have done this in the first place. I'm not equipped for this. I'm not like Steve Jobs. I'm not like Bill Gates. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I'm going to be able to succeed. And it's this constant back and forth battle with the two opposing forces on each shoulder and in, in each ear telling us, you're good enough. You can do this. You're going to make it. You stink. Like, you, you know, I don't know why you even set out to do this. Like other people are better than you. I don't know why you thought this was going to be for you. So entrepreneurship is, after all, constantly solving one problem after another in an ever-evolving universe of problems. I mean, if you really boil it down and we strip away like sort of the, the romantic ideas of it, in order to be an entrepreneur and to build a business, we have to constantly fight fires. We have to constantly solve problems. Even if that problem is how do we grow 10 times the size, it's still a problem. It's still a challenge. So we're constantly needing to overcome challenges. So if we internalize the fact that there are always problems and that is our focus, that is our lens. Oh, geez. I mean, I thought I just solved all these and now here's another problem. It's going to wear us down. It's going to, it's going to wear on us. It's going to beat us down. It's going to make us feel inadequate or like, imposters or failures. And this is all too common. It's all too real. And quite frankly, it's too heavy a burden for anyone to carry alone. It's also not realistic. You know, I was reading an article the other day about uh, an entrepreneur who's, who's built a, a successful business. I mean, he's not a household name. I don't know if most people would know him. Um, I had the, the fortune to meet him a couple of times um, early on when he was sort of getting started and everything and his company and, and things have evolved and stuff like that. But one of the things that he told in the story is the fact that, you know, he almost gave up in the early phases of his entrepreneurship because what he recognized was that it was just constant problems. And he said that those constant problems destroyed his confidence. He started to really wonder, you know, I got into this with all this enthusiasm and excitement I stepped into the ring and then I got punched in the mouth. You know, and I realized there's all these problems and it's just one problem after another. But then what he did was he stepped back and he realized that ultimately that's what being an entrepreneur is. It's what makes us successful. Yes, it's vision and all those things, 
But in order to actually steer the ship to get to where we're going to go, it's problem solved, problem solved, problem solved. That's what it is. That's the equation. And so he stuck with it. And now he's obviously so happy he did because he succeeded. But that is something that knocks a lot of people out. So the question is, what can we do along the way? Now that we're aware of this, what can we do so we don't allow everything to be problem focused and we don't allow ourselves to give up and be defeated by it? How can we manage this paradox of problem and solution in a way that still keeps us motivated, effective, and most importantly, confident? Because that's what we need. We need it for ourselves, but we also need it if we have a team. We also need it if we're trying to attract outside people, whether they're investors or partners, customers, whatever. If we don't have confidence in our own thing, how's anybody else going to? So let's talk about 10 ways that we can build and maintain our self-confidence through this whole situation and through this process. So that way we can be the most effective versions of ourselves and ultimately succeed. The first is to set achievable goals. We want to start by setting realistic goals and break them into simple, manageable tasks. You know, we might have really lofty dreams, but the fact of the matter is every time we get those wins, we already talked about this. Every time we get a win, we get that little jolt of confidence and enthusiasm. Yeah, I knew I could do this. And then when we have uh, something that's a problem, that dings us. So what we want to do is we want to tip that scale by adding lots of wins so it gets really heavy and the confidence really starts to shoot up. The way we do that is instead of having three gigantic goals that will take forever to get to, that then we're never going to feel the confidence from, break it into little pieces so each individual win gives us that little extra jolt to counteract anything negative that might be going on. It's really important. It's subtle, but it's really important. The second thing is to celebrate those small wins. You know, a lot of times we take for granted the stuff that we've done that's good. It's important to take time and acknowledge whether you're on your lunch break or you're at night or you're in the shower or whatever it is, even if we're not in the moment doing it, let's reflect back on stuff that we've done over the last day, week, month, year, whatever, that we're really proud of. Things that we did that, that you know, we started from nowhere and got to. Whatever, whatever milestone, whatever win we had, we landed that client. You know, we, we finished that marketing campaign. We, you know, increased our conversion rate, whatever it is. Take time to acknowledge and celebrate those successes, no matter how small, because it's all those small successes together that ultimately lead to the big one anyway. So we want to embrace that. And that recognition reinforces our belief in ourselves and our abilities, and it builds momentum. And momentum is really powerful. Once we start to get momentum, we start to get bigger and bigger about our ability to tackle things. The third thing we want to do is learn continuously. You know, we're always in the fray and it's very difficult to take time to step back. But even if we take 20 minutes, 30 minutes each day to listen to a podcast, wink, wink, or read a book or whatever, it's super important to be able to do that because when we're able to do that, we're constantly feeding our brains and we're on a mental diet of positive stuff. We all feel better when we're growing, when we feel like we're in growth mode. And by gaining knowledge and staying updated in our field, not only can give us information about what we need to do and make informed decisions, but it also makes us feel good about what we're doing in our career. We know that we're ascending. We know that we're growing. And it isn't just based on some bottom line profit or loss. We're doing it because of the process that we're going through. The fourth thing that we could do is to seek feedback and mentorship. This is really, really powerful. You know, constructive feedback can be invaluable and that's really useful. But in particular, getting a mentor or at least a group of people that are in a similar, um, you know, sort of field, like they're entrepreneurs as well, where we can share ideas. First of all, it helps us feel like we're not alone when we are tackling problems. But second of all, it allows other people to be able to pat us on the back or to give us advice that will, that will shift us from being, you know, mentally uh, like worried about things or in a state of fear more to an action mindset of, okay, I know what I need to do, right? I've got clarity now, so I know what I need to do. 
having that mentor, having that voice, having that ear to listen and to share is very, very valuable. And even if it isn't someone who's more successful than we are, even if it's someone just in the same boat facing the same challenges, that's fine. But it's somebody that we can talk to, get some reassurance from, and get some good ideas from as well. The fifth thing is to practice self-affirmation. Now, there are a couple schools of thought on this. Some people are, are you know, think this stuff is hocus pocus and fairy dust and tarot cards and all that. I get it, right? Some people live and die by this stuff. But the fact of the matter is, science is pretty much proven on this. Self-affirmation flat out works. Positive self-talk can significantly influence our mindset. So if we come up with a handful of phrases, a handful of affirmations, you know, world-class athletes do this. You think that a basketball player needs an affirmation to put a ball in a hoop? They've done this their entire lives. They do it anyway, because to perform at the highest level, it's what's required. We're, you know, gold medal Olympians have done this for decades. They visualize over and over. They have positive self-affirmation. They refuse to allow any negativity to enter their mind. And the interesting thing about our mind is that it's sort of like a vacuum. And if we don't fill it with good stuff, sometimes bad stuff creeps in automatically by default. So let's be conscious about it. Let's be proactive about it. Let's come up with positive reinforcing things we can say to ourselves and affirm how successful and great we are and how much we deserve what we're going after. And when we do that, that's going to continually boost us each day it's like eating our mental vegetables. We're getting to a point where we're getting bigger and stronger, and it's building our mind to be an unstoppable force. Same way we could build up our body with big muscles, we want to do exactly the same thing with our mind till it becomes habit and it's second nature to us. And we believe inherently that we're unstoppable. So it reinforces our strengths and it reinforces our abilities and it builds our self-esteem. The sixth thing we could do is visualize success. It's part and parcel, right? So now we have a goal in mind. Let's think about it. Let's really get in that moment of having achieved that. What does it feel like? What does it smell like? What does the world look like to us? What, you know, how does that feel? How do, how do people react to us? How do we react to the world? Get it as real and as vivid and as colorful and as in the moment and feel that emotion as much as possible and do it as often as possible, doing it over and over and over until it literally pulls ourselves, our autonomic nervous system into, into going in that direction automatically because that is the default setting we've got for ourselves and we'll accept nothing less. When our mind believes, our subconscious mind believes that that is our default setting, that's where it will take us. Seventh thing we could do is network. Right? So similar to mentorship, but even just building a strong network of peers that provides support, offer new opportunities, and validate what we're doing. Knowing that you're in it together with other people makes a big difference. When we feel part of a community, that connectedness, and in fact, in now in today's day and age, in the digital age, combined with the fact that we're just coming off of the whole COVID issue, people feel more isolated than ever. And that isolation and that loneliness breeds depression it breeds fear, and it breeds uncertainty. So when we, when we reach out and we join communities and we get involved with other people, it has the opposite effect. It bolsters us. It makes us feel more confident. It makes us feel more secure. And it makes us feel happier. Again, study after study after study shows having a sense of community and powerful relationships that are meaningful is one of the cornerstones of happiness across the board in every study, every culture, every age group, every socioeconomic bracket. An eighth thing we can do is manage stress effectively. So we are going to have stress in our lives, especially as entrepreneurs. There's no doubt about it. So let's find things that we can do so the stress doesn't erode our self-confidence. Stress management techniques, we can meditate if we like, exercise, take up a hobby, something that's a creative outlet that helps us maintain our mental health and self-assurance. Things as simple as taking a walk in the park, right? Or doing a workout. All of those things are super empowering and make us feel great. A ninth thing we can do is embrace failure as a learning opportunity. This is a huge distinction. 
instead of looking at it as, oh, I failed. Oh, I guess I'm no good at this stuff. Get excited. Get excited. Start to feel as though, listen, if I didn't make this happen, this is awesome because what it means is I'm going to learn from this. I can tell you in my own business, in my own career, some of my darkest moments where I felt like the biggest failure because things were crashing down and didn't go well, ended up, and I know it's cliche, but they ended up being the biggest turning points for me because out of that, I came out bigger, stronger, more effective and came back better than I was before. I didn't know how I was going to do it in the moment. I just knew I needed to find a way out. And as I th thought through it and fought through it, that is ultimately what ended up happening. And then I came out with even more resilience on the back end, even more unstoppable. That's really, really powerful. So if we view failures as stepping stones instead of obstacles, that will help us keep our confidence up. It's a chance to learn. It's a chance to fortify our resilience and our self-belief. And the 10th thing we can do is just stay resilient. Just decide to be persistent because that is a key in entrepreneurship. Stay committed to our vision despite any setbacks. Accept nothing other than success. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. That reinforces our confidence. It changes our mindset from, uh-oh, I don't know if I can do this to, okay, so this happened. What am I going to do to get through this? This is just another thing that's standing in my way of what I want. So what's the answer? And when we have that mentality, we're going to come up with the answer much more effectively, much more quickly, and with a lot less stress and grief. So building self-confidence is an ongoing process. Regularly practicing these kinds of strategies can help us maintain and enhance our self-belief, which leads us to more effective decision-making and leadership. It's that simple. So the takeaway here is that being an entrepreneur is among the toughest professions on earth because it's as much as an internal mind game as it is an external competition. No one hands us a paycheck. We have to earn everything that we make. And while it can be incredibly satisfying to feel that self-reliance, it can also be terrifying and soul-crushing at times. The entrepreneur's journey is personal. We often don't separate ourselves from our businesses. So we have the actual work to do, but we also have the mental and emotional burdens too. The key is to step back and recognize what it is, do our best to be analytical about it and separate emotion from it, and treat it like a game. Each obstacle is an opportunity to level up or get stronger. And if we could keep the joy and fun in it, we just might achieve both the success that we want and the fulfillment that we deserve too.